Thanks for watching CNA and being a Comcast customer. Enjoy the show. Boy, we've been talking about this through the last couple of weeks, days. The unemployment rate is at a 15-year high, and with loss of 500,000 jobs in November, you, you got to ask if it's happening to you, what's going to happen to your life after a layoff? And how should you decide really what is going to be your next career move? Anne-Marie Segarik joins us now. She is the author of Step Into the Right Career, and she's going to give us some advice on what to do if you're one of the 500,000 people that lost your job. And, you know, welcome to the program. Thank you for What is me. the number one piece of advice you would give to someone who's watching us right now who has lost their job or really worried about going to work today because they think they could get a pink slip? Yeah. Absolutely most important, your contacts, they're priceless. The mm -hmm. way people find jobs these days is not through job postings, it's through your network. Mm -hmm. So if you're still at work, grab those contacts off your work computer, put them into your personal address book, use networking sites like Facebook and LinkedIn to supplement that information so you have a good list to contact when the time or if the time should come. Networking, networking, networking is Absolutely. what you're saying. You know, in these tough economic times, is it is it better just to land the first job that comes along or should you wait for that opportunity that you really want, the so-called dream job? Right, right. It I get this question asked of me all the times, and clients want to know, do I go for the job that just pays the bills or go for my heart? The reality is, is you have to look at your situation. Mm -hmm. So if your situation is that you need the money to pay the bills, then I don't care what your dream job is. No one's going to care. Get that job that pays the bills. I call it stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a situation where you can say, okay, my finances are covered for the most part, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to you to pursue the dream job? The dream jobs exist, but they take an investment, time, energy, money. Here's a question though. If I take that job, the first thing that comes around, how long do I stay in it before I can leave to say to them, basically, thanks for holding me over, but I, there's something else I want to do in my life. You know, it, it, it really depends on your situation. I've seen people stay a couple of months in a job because it just wasn't the right fit. Sure. I've seen other people say, you know what, this job is the next best step for me to get to where I want to go, so they stay for a couple of years. Let's talk about something you have in your book. You talk about energy drains, things that can weigh you down yeah. during the transition. What are these drains and, 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 and identify one or two for us? Yeah, absolutely. So energy drains are things we tolerate. Every one of us puts up with things on a daily basis, to-do lists, things that are outstanding we need to handle. People in transition have a, I see actually three things that people are always dealing with when mm. they're in transition. One leftover anger and resentment mm -hmm. from being let go. This right. is huge. I see this with everyone, and it's normal. Number two? Number two is the friends and family you surround yourself with. Some of them have enough worry mm -hmm. for all of us, so we need to watch who we talk There's to. There's sort of the weight on you. And number three? Number three is your physical environment. Make sure your physical environment is supportive of a fresh start. Mm -hmm. If you're saying think about switching and maybe taking on something new, uh, that might be a little bit daunting because you're going to have to start at the bottom of the yeah. ladder where maybe you're at mid-level and you thought you were rising. Right. Okay, so realize this. If you are thinking, I want to start something new, career changes are like roller coasters. There's going to be an up and down no matter what. Mm -hmm. But you have to decide, is it worth it for me to pursue this opportunity? And if so, mm -hmm. then what's the gap between where I am today and where I want to go? Because you may be on a roller coaster career that may go up high. You exactly. say in closing, I'm just out of time, you say yeah. it's important to be social. You Absolutely. talked about the, the, the drains. You're saying in this time you have to be positive, you have to be networking, yeah. you have to have to have that smile even though your the rest of you is crying. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not talking about complete smiling. You can be upset for the most part, but what mm. you have to do is not isolate yourself at home. Too many people make the computer their best friend. Sure. You want to be social. You want to reach out to people in your network, reach out to people that are working, set up lunch dates, don't turn down party invitations mm -hmm. because it's through other people that you will actually find your next opportunity. To get out there and pound the streets and right. uh, and shake a few hands and hand out some business cards. Absolutely. All right, and get ready for change. That's right. All right, Anne Marie uh, Sagaric, author of Step Into the Right Career. It's a it's a segment that affects so many of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed the program. Thanks for watching CN8 and Comcast.